welcome back. And Pendleton Place for Children and Families. We're going to find out all about it. And Laurie Roven is here with us. She is the executive director. And next to her is Christy Ballantyne. And Christy is the director of Smith Services. We'll find out about that. And Terry McLaughlin. And Terry is the director of Family Bridges. And we have a phone number and a website. And I just have to begin at the beginning. What is Pendleton Place for Children and Families? Pendleton Place is a children and family service agency that um, focuses on helping children and families who have some form of crisis or high need through prevention, through assessment, prevention, and intervention. So we have three programs, and Christy and Terry are here with me to share two of our programs that have uh, our community base. And you, so your outreach is not just to children or or abused women, it's to everybody in it's, a way. It is, Families. it's for everybody and we know for children to um, be healthy and live productive lives, we really do need to work with families. Traditionally, we've only worked with foster children, and now we're doing that, working with foster children as well as community families. So Christy will talk about in okay. Smith Supportive Services her work out in the community as well as Terry with Supervised Visitation. Okay, well, what, what is Smith Supportive Services? services. What is it? Smith Supportive Services focuses on residential and community. Uh, we started the program in regards to community this past year, working with families and kids that are in the middle, in between, whether it being in foster care or being just in the community, do not have assistance for teens ages 16 and up. Um, our focus is to help them get back on track so they can be productive citizens within the environment. Okay, so that you're, you're aiming kind of at Teens. And families. And families. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So you really have programs. It's a great outreach. And you've been doing this since 1975? We have. But people uh, don't know about it. Well, in 1975, up until now, we have been an emergency shelter okay. for children All who've right. been removed from yeah. the home. But now, we still have a 10-bed girls' home. However, now we are also working out in the community. And the reality is, unless we work with a child and their family, nice. it, it, they'll just keep repeating that cycle. So we're working towards really healing children and ultimately restoring um, a healthy family. It's a family. monumental task. And Terry, tell us about this Family Bridges. Well, thank you. Um, family Bridges. Uh, at Family Bridges, we do supervised visitation and safe exchange. So we provide the environment in which children have an opportunity to visit with their non-residential parent, um, their biological parent, uh, as a result of being placed in foster care. Go okay. ahead. No, I, I'm confused. You, mm -hmm. The children that you work with, then, are not living at home with this fam with bridges. In other words, they have, but you give them an opportunity to reestablish relationships with, with people they have been removed from the home, is that it? Yes, either they've been removed from the home because of uh, abuse or neglect that they've mm. experienced at the hands of that parent, or they are living with one parent and not the other parent, and because of conflict or domestic violence that may have occurred between the adult mm. parties. We provide the environment that's a home-like, um, neutral, safe, nurturing environment in which these children can maintain connections with that parent that they love, and that parent loves them. So you bring the so the the child is actually living in your facility. The the child is actually living with either a foster parent, a foster parent, or the separated parent. All right. So okay. through divorce. Okay. Um, okay and they are visiting with the parent that they no longer reside with, may at some point in the future live with that parent again. But in the meantime, our job is to make sure that they maintain connection, they have an opportunity to build those healthy, happy memories with that parent that might otherwise be delayed. We also serve um, the, that same opportunity for dads that sometimes find out they have babies, um, one week, three weeks, three years into a child's life, and maybe have never even had an experience with a child, never held a child, never diapered a child. 
we help re reunify that relationship between the child and the adult and help them build those skills in a safe, nurturing environment until such time that they can have that child in their own home. So actually, Family Bridges, you, you cover a lot of needs. But I have a question. If you have a child who comes from an environment where there has been violence or abuse, and then you, you try to reunite that child with the parent who has committed, that, that, that can be pretty dangerous, can't it? It can be. One of the things, it, it's um, very wise on your part to recognize that. And it's one of the things that we put forward, uh, lead with, making sure the environment is safe and secure first and foremost. Um, the danger that that child or the violence that may have existed may not have been perpetrated or, or um, the child may not have been the direct victim of that, may have been a victim of that by virtue of witnessing other violence, may have been neglect. It also may have been chemical dependency, mental illness, um, any number of things that may have put that child or at some point someone may have concern that that child could be unsafe. So we take all of the safe precautions and then we put them in a home-like environment that help that parent practice skills that maybe they've never seen before because they quite possibly are a generation away of having been that same child themselves earlier. Help them practice the healthy, safe parenting skills in our environment that hopefully will allow them to have a, a more natural environment in the future with that child. Um, if a child has been damaged directly by that, abused or neglected by that parent in the past, we hope to bridge that gap in time where there's that vulnerability or danger for that child. It could be six months, it could be two years, it could be 10 years. But one of the things that we know is that if we can remove that, that concern of the safety for the child, if we can assure that it's safe, we can. Uh, we do know that that child loves that parent and benefits from that relationship as long as we can create the, that safe, healthy, happy environment. As many times these children, as you say, they are not directly, nothing has physically ever been done to them, but they witness such violence that it seems to me that many times a child would be afraid, uh, you know, to have contact with Sometimes that can be the case. And uh, they're not forced to do that then, are they? You don't oh. force a child to go in and have two hours with the person that's done whatever it We're is. We're very cautious about making sure that that child isn't re-victimized from previous yeah. experiences. Yeah. If I may just inter yeah. interject, um, the courts in many instances court order visitation. It's been occurring in our county through a divorce or child welfare case with, in a divorce case, not a safe place to go. Yeah. What Terry and our program is doing is ensuring that that safety is in place so that they're not um, having that visit in the mall or in the lobby of the law enforcement. And there's also a parent group that's free and there's information on our website or that's you can wonderful. call. Yeah. Um, so that ensuring, you know, in 10, 20 years that child may return home. As well as in our community-based programs, doing what we can to ensure um, the safety and the well-being, helping that parent get connected, that might be food, is um, not have enough food in the, in, in the home. So our case manager will make sure, connect that family to an agency that can help them get food. We also have what's called a benefit bank um, on site so that um, the case manager will do the, um, um, do the, the background with the parent to see what is needed. It might be referring a parent to an agency that helps um, them with work. So if there are things that the child's parent needs to be healthy, then we're going to do that. The child themselves may need a group. The child may have problems in school, so they might help with you know getting them set up with tutoring um, and the like. And um, what we're trying to do with the uh, Smith Supportive Service Program is avoid that family going into DSS um, or juvenile justice. Okay, so you try to provide, you know, like a, a friendly atmosphere. Yes. Where they don't feel like they're in a, in a police station or, or that sort of thing. So they can have some, the child can feel safe and, Correct. and easy. Correct. Yeah. 
-hmm. Yeah. And so you actually, the Smith Services, you, you're all, are you specially trained then, or your people, to deal with some of this it's pretty dramatic stuff? Yes, ma'am. Even with the residential program, we go through um, various um, training in regards to dealing with clients that are in that are trauma based, and then um, also with the community, so that they they can feel comfortable enough to help um, the residents through the process. Now, Christy, if somebody out there is seeing this, and they're in a traumatic situation, um, would would it, they be free to call you people? Yes, and say, I, I'm, I need help, uh, I need to talk to somebody. Yeah, our focus In other words, is they the don't have to be referred to you by right. a police officer or something like that. Right. That's they, what I mean. They, they can call. Our um, phone number is 864-467-3650. And our website. Um, but they can call. Our focus is always the child and then what the child needs. And if the parent needs help, then we're going to work with that, that family um, as well. Um, the only program that requires a Department of Social Service uh, referral is our third program, which is the Family and Child Assessment Center. And that is for children and their families who have recently been removed. And so a foster parent may be asked to bring that child to Pendleton Place to participate in a comprehensive assessment. So that is the only program that requires an outside referral. Um, in Terry's case, the family bridges, the courts may order it. And so in that case, the courts will um, you know, tell the family, okay. but they can also self-call the agency. Well, Terry, what do they, how do you assess how deep this problem is and what the needs are? Well, when we, when we receive a referral from the courts um, or DSS, we sit down with each of the adult parties and the children as needed, as indicated, separately and talk to them about what their history is, what, what brought them to um, seek our services for supervised visitation, what history precipitated um, the, the violence and fear that they may have going forward, and um, and then we look at that from, from the whole, whole perspective, all, all avenues of information, including the referral source, the courts, the social workers, the battered women's shelter, whomever provides this information, guardian ad litems. We look at that and um, have a, prepare the environment for that family. We also coach families, coach parents in, uh, you talked about, the, um, the fear that a child may have. A court yeah. may order this visitation uh, regardless of the child's fear and well, the parents are compelled though. to provide that. That's why we want to make sure that that's a safe place for that to occur. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can work with that parent in a coaching environment in, with the visiting parent 15 minutes on the front end and kind of set up goals for the visit that day, assist in, in the parent achieving those goals in the interaction and behavior uh, in parenting during that visit and then after the visit, sit down and go through it again and say, what just happened? What would we like to, what did you learn from that? What would we like to do better next time? And work with the parent as they evolve in their parenting skills. When parents come to us and when, when they have children that are born, they really do want to be the very best parent that they can be. They don't all have the same tools that one, some of us may or may not have. So we're going to help them develop those tools and allow that child to be safer with that parent in the future. Terry, also um, another element of her program is um, safe custody exchange, and that may be parents that just need a safe, neutral place yeah. to exchange the child. And, and so really safety is first, and it is a warm environment. Um, we are located on Pendleton Street. We, um, we serve, and in Family Bridges, we serve families outside of Greenville County, so mm -hmm. um, in the upstate. We are a nationally accredited organization, so quality is top 
notch. We um, work very hard towards tweaking our programs, achieving outcomes, sharing that. Um, people that would like to learn more about what we do, we invite you for a tour. We welcome donations. Right. Individuals may go to our website and there is a secure um, place to do that, but we would love to have you in and tour and see for yourself what we're doing and the broad reach we are having um, in helping children and families in crisis or in need. And the child, of course, is always, I would imagine, the key person to be, to be considered before anything else. Correct. Mm -hmm. The children and victims are absolute paramount um, safety concerns and what we put forward as a priority in all of our services. Correct. Regardless mm -hmm. of yeah. the age. Because yeah. yeah. I, um, I heard the other day about a child that the judge said this child has to have so many visits with the father and the child didn't want to go. And that's right. where and our program see, is so helpful. And that helpful. child was frightened. Of course. And many times, small, especially small children, they're afraid to come forward and, and say anything because they're afraid they'll be punished. Ab absolutely. And that's where our program can help. Is what Terry said is absolute. The child comes first. And when the judge, by law, a lot of times that's yeah, why that sure. happens. Yeah. And that's where providing that safe place, plus having a group. The men's group is separate from the women's group, and there is okay. child care. So those kinds of components and elements are great. Okay. In the moment we have left, do you use volunteers at all? Or are you all so specially trained that none of us could participate? We, in all of our programs, we use volunteers. Okay. In each of those volunteers, we look at their skill set right. and how we can okay. enhance that and train them specifically for so our programs. So if someone out there would like to get involved, they can call that number or there's yes. the website and I'll yep. keep that information here. In this brand new year, God bless you for making this a better place Every day, especially for children, Thank they you. have to come first. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you for Thank coming you. and sharing with us. And wherever you are, we wish you blessings. We'll see you next time. <laughs>